Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld from RackN with, with a presentation about Data Center's Last Mile, Zero Touch Metal Automation. Uh, this is a popular presentation we've given several times uh, with my co-founder Greg Althaus and uh, because of the interest we wanted to create a video of it so that you would be able to see it. Uh, in this case I'm doing it solo so you'll have to tune into some of Greg's other videos to uh, get the, the flavor that he adds into these uh, presentations and demonstrations. Uh, we are, we've, we've been doing this business for quite some time. I'm, I'll move my picture out of the way so you can see Greg. There you go. And um, we, uh, we have a real background in this problem space. We've been working in uh, physical infrastructure automation for over eight years. Uh, on this effort alone, our careers go back in this area much, much, much longer. Uh, we started at Dell uh, doing hyperscale hardware where they were trying to introduce something called Cloud Edge, which was for the scalable hardware infrastructure. And our team was brought in to specifically do software to help take this to the next level, uh, help, help companies who were not Facebook, Google, Microsoft, uh, you know, learn how to use hyperscale, scale-out designs. They were really precursors for what we see now as cloud patterns or cloud-native patterns. Uh, what, what we saw is DevOps trying to be applied, and, and we actually built software for this. It was uh, the first OpenStack installer, something called Crowbar. It's still in use by SUSE. Uh, we're really proud of that effort, although uh, what Racken does today with Digital Rebar is really four generations beyond that. Um, and it, it reflects our learning. We have a white paper um, called Building Op uh, Infrastructure in Layers where we talk about how uh, we've really transformed over time and taken those lessons learned and distilled it into what is now uh, Digital Rebar version 3 um, and, and the whole way that, that infrastructure is constructed. What we learned to start this journey was that operations is inconsistent, manual, and heterogeneous. Uh, I'm not going to read the slides to you. What, what, I'll let you read them. What, what, we've, what we found was that when we went into environments, it was very hard for us to have a repeatable win, and even harder for us to go back into accounts that we'd, we'd been successful in and help them do upgrades and what we call day two operations. And so the only way to fix that was to create software that fixed that foundational operational problem. If we did that right, then everything else went away. And a lot of that came back to we had to be able to tear down and rebuild the environment completely automatically. Uh, what we called at the time apply, rinse, repeat, or ready state infrastructure. Today you would call immutable infrastructure. This idea that you can tear everything down and build it back up and that the faster, more often you do that, the more robust your infrastructure is. And if you think about those lessons, that's what Digital Rebar reflects. That's what Racken is building on top of Digital Rebar and helping customers with. And it really reflects, this is, is our sort of worldview here, is that people have tools that do provisioning and control. Um, they have tools that do orchestration and platforms. The orchestration platform side is moving very fast. Uh, the control side is not moving as fast, doesn't have as much investment. Um, and it's sort of broken. We have things that provision, we have things that control, we don't have things that, that actually solve this integration problem. That's what we started building eight years ago. It's really what we, what we strive to do with Digital Rebar, is provide a place where you have a complete bare metal integration uh, at the bottom, but the purpose of those layers is to drive and integrate in above that, that work. So it's designed to be seamless integration without having to be a one tool to rule them all. We really see that uh, we're going to have a mix and match of tools. There already are, is a mix and match of tools. And so what we're trying to do is help companies use tools they have and they're using successfully and then adapt to future innovations. Um, and so those are great examples. For example, you know, we'll use everything from Chef Puppet, um, Terraform, SaltStack, uh, Ansible, it really doesn't matter us bash scripts. Um, uh, we were talking to some, we don't have a CF Engine integration, but CF Engine would be fine. Uh, or even do integrations where you don't need those anymore. Some of the Kubernetes work that we're seeing eliminates the need to have any of those tools. You can just bring a node online with, the, with a token. And so there's this real desire to have seamless integration, and that's what we're going to talk about uh, in the rest of the presentation. I'm going to give you some grounding in, in what Racken does and what Digital Rebar does. Uh, we use this graphic, uh, simplified graphic, to sort of lay out the, the whole landscape. 
and let me drill through that briefly. The idea here is that we've got um, digital rebar down in the bottom. This is a standalone scaffolding. It's designed to be composable infrastructure. Um, let me move this text out of the way. Whoops, that didn't work. Um, and so uh, what happens with this is that you actually have infrastructure um, it's completely air gap, standalone. We don't manage things. We're not a managed service provider. Digital rebar is a standalone open source scaffolding, meaning it's a, it, it's a service. And then you can add community package. There's open source community that's, that Racken helps maintain, but has community contribution and a, a pretty thriving um, community at this point. Uh, we have packages that Racken maintains, so you can get commercial support. You can you can take things that jumpstart your own operations team and not maintain things like RAID and BIOS configuration automation. And then we have uh, customer automation where, where customers who have unique processes or their own burn-in things um, or want to add additional steps, they have their own Chef, Puppet, Ansible playbooks, they can add those things in. Um, all that's good. Uh, so Digital Rebar is designed to be this, this standalone open source piece that's a framework. Um, and the way it works is, is pretty straightforward, um, as straightforward as you can make physical infrastructure. There's actually a lot of different uh, protocols and pieces that go into it. This is a simplified version of what happens. So the provision service part of Digital Rebar handles Pixie, which is actually TFTP, uh, HTTP, um, and often multiple stages of HTTP boot infrastructure. So that process returns an operating system kickstart. Um, there are ways to do immutable infrastructure on that and avoid the kickstart process, and we'll describe it, but a kickstart process, um, for us that often starts with the discovery image that we'll talk about. Included in that is some post-provisioning steps that install the digital rebar agent, something in, turn, in the community we call the runner, the agent will pull down work from the provision service, register itself, and then run additional commands. So it's, a, it's actually a combination of operating system kickstarts, which is a scripted install, and then post-provision actions with an agent. Uh, the agent's designed to be dissolvable, so if you want to run something else, Chef Puppet, um, Salt, those are great. Um, we are designed to get out of the way quickly and stop running. Um, there are some use cases where you could leave this agent running if you want to keep control of, say, the discovery image, which runs entirely in memory, and you might not want to install a, a long-term agent on. Uh, this, this slide has some of the protocols and how things break down. Um, I'm not going to spend much time on it, except to note um, it's in Golang. It's designed to be very simple. Often we, we take two hours to train somebody, and then they're completely self-sufficient. It's a five-minute install. Um, and the footprint of this, it's a single binary. It can run on ARM and Intel and you know, IMD architectures in multiple operating systems, Windows, Mac, and, and Linux. Um, and it can, it's small enough that it can run embedded on a switch. Uh, so you could deal with your data center and put top-of-rack provisioning infrastructure. And then our configuration system is designed to be distributed across hundreds of DRP endpoints. Um, we don't have much time to get into that, but it's, it's a very important technical advance in how we manage this infrastructure. And then on the rack end side, we've been building management infrastructure on top of this. So it's the same picture, but now we're going, how, how do you interact with Digital Rebar? Digital Rebar is entirely API driven. Uh, it's a 12 factor application with cloud native design and architecture uh, paradigms. So we build a website um, that, that interfaces and provides management, lets you download content into the scaffolding. Scaffolding doesn't really come with much content or any content, everything that's that it does is is downloaded as, as YAML files, basically, that, that drive the system. Um, some of the things that Racken does are completely open source, and some of the things that we do are Racken proprietary components. Um, our self-service portal, which we offer free to the community for basic use, um, has some uh, more advanced enterprise pieces. We're adding synchronization, and then there's uh, content that we support as proprietary, like hardware, RAID and BIOS pieces, and Upstack integrations. Some of those are completely open, depending on the things that we're interfacing to. Um, and so with that roadmap, 
sort of it's worth reframing where we see the problem. It's not provisioning. We there's plenty of ways that you can do provisioning. You know, if all you needed was provisioning, just keep using Cobbler. Um, I know it's not maintained, and I know it hasn't had any innovation in it for a long time, but it, it does provision systems. What we see as the problem with provisioning is actually a lack of integration. So people don't want to just provision, they actually want to provision with integration. They want to be able to drive their provisioning over and over again, do immutable installs. So you want to be able to know when a system's up so that you can do post-provisioning. You want the physical layer to have tightly in tight integrations to DevOps and all the other tooling and pipelines and CI/CD infrastructure that you've built. Um, and so today's demo is really designed to help with that. Um, and this is a demo about, we use Terraform. Terraform is just a reference case for us, and we'll talk about it. Um, this presentation does not have the demo. If you're impatient for the demo, jump ahead. Um, a couple of slides, you'll see a link to the YouTube demo um, that I gave. Uh, that also has links to Greg's demo, which where he goes into a lot more detail, talks about the tech of how this stuff works. Um, but what I want to do here is frame that demo in a way that um, I didn't actually do in the demo video. Uh, so let me, let me explain what the demo is doing and, and why it's important. The, the fundamental thing for this demo is we're trying to show how we have cloud-like integration, which means a black box system. I, fundamentally Terraform, very simple API-driven cluster building. It's meant for Amazon, Google, you know, uh, VMware OpenStack type integrations and the whole idea is that you say give me a server or a, a group of servers in this state so you request a state things happen and then you get a machine back in the return state that's fundamentally what is going on in in Terraform or any of these clusters a lot of the Bosch does the same thing um, uh, Docker has a tool uh, Docker machine that does something similar it's a pretty common pattern because it's a cloud pattern. We're trying to bring this to physical, and so behind the scenes, what Digital Rebar has to do is actually integrate a whole bunch of stages and steps and process to make that happen. Clouds do the exact same thing. It's all black box to the consumer. And so what you're gonna see is inside of that requested state, we have to have a clean machine, we have to install it, configure it, test it, and then return it, join it back into that infrastructure. Typically that looks something like this. Uh, this is what we've been doing, um, boy, for eight years. Even Crowbar had a workflow similar to this. A new server comes in. Uh, we go through a Pixie process to discover it, which means a RAM boot. Um, we'll do a whole bunch of work against that. Once we know what's going on, we'll, we'll reinstall, we'll reboot it to install an operating system. We'll install that operating system to disk and then do a whole bunch of plugins and tasks and then clean it. We'll talk a little bit later about what an immutable infrastructure workflow looks like. Uh, it's a slightly different than this, but not very. Uh, but this is the basic workflow that, that everybody implements. Um, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of errors here because the reality is, is that it's not just five steps. Each step decomposes into what we call stages. Those stages are um, different depending on what you do. Some of them are very standard like discovery. Some of them uh, can be made into proprietary support things like Raiden BIOS, but some of them are unique on a customer by customer basis like Burnin. So we end up with a series of stages that are chained together. Uh, this is part of what Digital Rebar calls stages, um, no surprise. And uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward to conceive of. It's a little bit more complex to actually implement. Inside of each stage is a series of tasks. Uh, those tasks actually decompose into smaller templates. So every component of this is what we call composable. Composability is a very important aspect of our design patterns. Um, and some of those, those composable steps become read-only and supportable. Some of them become field customizable. You'll notice here, and we've tried to highlight it, uh, different steps have different levels of uh, configuration. So you might take things out and disable, you might add in, uh, you might use content straight out of the box, or you might mix and match. And all those things have to be good because every environment's a little bit different. And composability allows us to have reuse and allow somebody to start with a completely customized environment and then gradually fade into a less customized environment. If you're trying to read the slides and you're frustrated because my video is over obscuring it, uh, we are posting these slides to SlideShare, and you can just read them directly. Um, and here's what the demo looks like. 
the Terraform demo um, basically works in conjunction between Terraform, which we have at the top, digital rebar at the bottom, and then servers. So when new servers, uh, I'm going to work from left to right, so one to A, uh, new servers come in to, uh, if you're a programmer, this is driving you nuts, I should have started at zero and ended at nine, so I'm mixing my programming because I went to hex. Um, get over it. So I did. The idea here is that uh, we have uh, the Terraform system doesn't actually start at one. Digital Rebar is going to get new servers. We're going to create an inventory, so a pool of resources. The new servers uh, start off basically bare, raw, and we will inventory them, understand what we get, put a control operating system on it. Terraform is going to come in and actually make a request. So it looks at Digital Rebar, it asks for available servers, which we indicate with flags. Uh, it, so it finds that there are available servers and it requests against the API to isolate those servers for a cluster. Um, so it marks them allocated. And then Digital Rebar then makes, detects those changes, gets a new stage request from Terraform, and then rebuilds the servers to match the request. So it's literally moving it from a, a Terraform ready stage into a finished stage with an operating system. So you start, uh, Terraform asks for an operating system install, moves through a series of stages into a finished uh, stage, at which point it's released back to Terraform. Terraform is going to do, its, the, the user of Terraform is going to do whatever work they want to do with that. When Terraform goes to say it's destroying those, that, that plan, then it will release the server. So it comes back and puts the machines back into a discovered mode. That discovered uh, stage then rebuilds, it will clean the machines, it will do burn in and clean up, and then release them back to Terraform ready. Digital Rebar provides those workflows behind the simple request. So everything I've shown you, you make a request, you get a state out. Destroy is actually requesting a new, release, basically a release state that the system goes through. Um, and then the system is back to having a pool of available servers. So this is the place where we go. The demo actually only shows you this one sliver of this workflow. Um, it's the core piece of, of what's going on, right? You're requesting servers and, and showing uh, Digital Rebar building them. Uh, the whole process uh, takes a little bit longer because you have to go through discovery. I actually have another video showing preparing steps one and two so that you can do the three, four, five parts of these demos. So this is the place where you should pause this video and jump over and watch the Terraform provision demo. Or hang on, I've only got about five more minutes of content. Let me finish this video and then you jump over. Either way, get some popcorn. It's going to be a lot of fun. So. I already walked through uh, this process. It's worth reviewing. In that demo, what, what you're seeing is a server gets provisioned at Pixie Boots, goes through the process. We install an operating system. Our agent does post provisioning, things like SSH keys, burn in, clean up, all those good things. Uh, so here's, here's sort of the bonus content. I mentioned this before, mutable versus configured infrastructure. Digital Rebar supports both. Uh, on the left, what you'll see is a DevOps configuration pattern, meaning we build a base hardware configuration, we install an operating system on it, we install configuration tooling, uh, and there's multiple of them. I keep saying Chef, Puppet, Ansible, Salt. Uh, there's other, other options, uh, more merging every day. But the purpose of those, tool, those tools is to sustain a system. So you start that configuration tooling is going to build your application install and then patch the application. So you're going to you're going to leave the whole system in place and then you're going to go in and then patch the app application from zero to one to two to three. Um, in place upgrade would be the the thing to think about. But the idea is that I don't have to reinstall the operating system very often. Because configuration tooling is taking care of all those upgrades. And so what we have going on here, that's the configuration side. What we're seeing come up is, is a very popular pattern uh, for immutability. I'll actually drive to this on the next slide so you can see some of my text. We see this as a winning pattern. Um, it's much simpler, it's very fast, and it's very predictable. Um, and it, frankly, it matches the way people are working in cloud. Our expectation is that physical infrastructure should match cloud infrastructure. And the more we do that, 
the better things are going to be because then we can align our tools and processes and procedures with cloud uh, style provisioning and we believe that will end up making physical infrastructure even more powerful uh, and easier to use and repeatable than it ever has been We're really taking advantage of what people have learned in the clouds because the cloud innovation cycles are so much faster than physical has traditionally been so in our in this vision people deploy new applications learn iterate develop in the cloud and then bring things back into physical when they're more stable and they can deal with a uh, slower boot time although frankly some of the physical boot times we're seeing with these patterns are so fast that um, they're materially um, just as fast as cloud so here's the the idea uh, instead of building the hardware and then maintaining it we're actually destroying the hardware images on an ongoing basis so the whole application stack uh, hardware, RAID and BIOS, operating system initialization routine instead of configuration, initialization, and application stack are deployed as a single unit, uh, an immutable image, meaning it's all, it's all together, you don't change individual pieces. And then to patch any part of that stack, the application, the initialization, the operating system, you replace the whole stack together. Uh, and so that allows you to do an integrated test. So if you're testing an application patch, you're testing against the known op operating system environment. Uh, you're not testing the application against one thing and then hoping the environment has the correct operating systems. And the same is true with operating systems. If you're changing or patching the operating system, you're testing the application stack in that exact configuration, that exact stack. Um, and then you replace, over, it, replace it over and over again. Um, in this case, what you can do is instead of booting into the final system, what you're actually doing is booting into a test system. You're, sorry, you're booting into a discovery system, what we would call Sledgehammer in Digital Rebar Speak, um, and then installing the operating system directly into that image. Um, you could actually install the new image into the old image and A, B, rotate disks and things like that. We aren't seeing things quite that sophisticated, so it's a two reboot cycle, um, easily shortenable to one. Uh, if you were if you were looking to shave that extra three minute reboot cycle out, um, but that this is basically the immutable pattern. It's something we have been building in Digital Rebar right now. It's uh, a little bit custom, not because of Digital Rebar, but because people have to build their own operating system images, and that process hasn't been standardized. Uh, Racken is working to standardize that process so that we can show up and, and move people even faster through the process. With that, I'm, I'm done. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you have questions, ping us online. We'd love to talk to you more about it. Uh, thanks a lot. This has been Rob Hirschfeld with RackN, uh, and we are done.